Hi, and welcome to Meetings in Math. You are here for section 5.1, Solving Systems of Linear Equations by Graphing. This is just one way to solve systems of equations, but it is the most visual way to solve them. The essential question is, how can you describe the solution of a system of linear equations using a graph? Today, you are going to need your Jaguar Jot on section 5.1, a pencil or a pen, a highlighter may be useful, a calculator, a ruler is a definite must, problem solving skills and perseverance. If you don't have a ruler, any kind of straight edge will be just fine. So before we get started, we need to talk about what a system of linear equations even is. It is a set of two or more linear equations. And what we're looking for is the solution that is going to make all of those equations true at the same time. So for example, if I have a line here, and I have another line here. We're looking for the point that is going to make both of those lines true at the same time. And that would be the point that is right here. And so that would be the solution that is making them both true at the same time. A solution to a linear equation is a point that lies on the line. So here we have again this example where the line is on both of them. And the point makes both of the equation true. So here we have an example of why we would want to use this. Let's say that we have a bed and breakfast and we have to spend some money before we actually open it up. And we spend $500. The cost for food and utilities is $10 per night and the family is charging only $60 to rent the room. And we need to know how many times do we have to rent the room before we even break even. So when we look at this, we first need to know what is each thing worth. And so X, is the number of nights and C is our cost in dollars for the bed and breakfast. So that's how much it's going to cost us. So that's money out. And R is the revenue or the money that we make. And so at zero nights, that is just the money that is going out. So on zero nights, we have just spent money and that is it. So it's going to cost us $500 just to spend the money, and we have made no money at all. After one night, we have made some money. We made $60, but it cost us another $10. So that's the $500 plus the $10. And then we continue on using this pattern. So the next night would cost us another $10 for $520 but we would earn another $60. So now we have $120 and we continue on using this pattern. And let's go ahead and fill out this entire table until we are done. So let's go ahead and pause it. You pause that, finish filling up that table and then come on back. So now you can see that the table is finished being filled out. And I went ahead and I added the equations that went with it. So you should be able to see now that we do have a value or a table for our cost. It cost us $500 to start and then $10 per night. So that's money out that we don't get to keep, but we did make a revenue. Our revenue was $60 per night. So that right there are, is our cost out and our revenue. And so what we want to know is when do we break even? In other words, when does C equal R? So when we say break even, that's what we're looking for, is when does C equal R? And so let's look through our table for when are they equivalent. So I'm just going through and I'm looking at these different values. And obviously C is more than R here. Sometimes it's not even when does C equal R, but when does R become greater than C? So it's not always going to be nice and equal. And so I continue to look. And so far, R is always less than C. But suddenly, I get 600 is equal to 600. That looks like it happens on the 10th night. So at the 10th night, they are equal. So that is the table. So on the table, it shows it nice and neat and clearly. But remember, this whole thing is asking us about the equations, or excuse me, asking us about the graphs. So what we need to do is we actually need to take our graphs for revenue and for our cost, and we actually need to put it onto the equation or onto a graph. 
because we want to know what does it look like on a graph. So we have to go back to what we know about graphing. So let's go ahead and start with our revenue graph. It starts at 0, 0, and it's 60 over x. So over up 60 and over 1. Well, I'm actually going to use our table to help us because I don't have nice 60 over 1s and anything like that. So I'm going to look for, I'm going to do 5 and 300. 5 and 300, that's a very nice graph. And I'm going to graph that one. So that's my revenue line. I can pick any night now that I want and tell you how much I make on that night. And I don't have to calculate it. Now let's do my cost graph. I'm going to do the same thing. At 500, and zero is 500. That's how much it costs me just to get into this bed and breakfast business. And now I am going to go pick another nice one that I can find, hopefully. Um, the other nice one happens to be, I'm looking for, because these are all 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. My nether next nice one is 10 and 600, which happens to be right there. So I'm going to graph that one. And what we're looking for now is where do those two lines intersect, giving us our answer. And you can see that they intersect where x is 10, which is exactly what we had predicted, which is on the 10th night, we break even. So on the 10th night, they are going to break even with $600. So we've answered that question. We did it with a table. We did it with a graph. We went through it very methodically, but we eventually want to be able to do it with just a graph. That means we have to be pretty proficient with graphing from an equation. So now I have just a naked problem, meaning it doesn't have any context to it. I just have my two equations and I'm going to graph them and I'm going to find out what is the solution. So we have to go back from what we knew before, which is what is n, what is b, graph the line. Remember, n means move, b means begin. Really, n was the slope and b is y-intercept, but that's how I can help myself out. n means move, b means begin. So we do need to start off remembering that y equals mx plus b. And starting there is really going to help us just remember where things were. So if we look at the first one, y, that's going to be a 2 for m. And I'm going to pick two different colors to write my line in just to help me my two different lines. So that's really a 2 over 1. So we're going to go up 2 and write 1. And b is 5. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph that one right now. So we have to start at 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it's always starting on the y-axis. And it says up 2 and right 1, except for I don't have enough room to go up 2 and right 1, so I'm going to have to reverse everything. So I'm going to have to go down and left. So I have to reverse it all. So down 2, so 1, 2, and 1. So there's my new point. So I'm going to go ahead and put my line that goes through it. Now, if I'm using a straight edge, my pen and my paper, I'm going to line everything up nicely with my ruler. Make sure it goes all the way through because I don't know where that next one's going to go. Uh, that's not a very good one. You have to be highly accurate on these ones um, because if you're not, you are not going to know where to put your answer. Your answer is not going to show up. So there's my first one. I'm going to switch to another color because I want to be very clear what my answer is. So on this one, it's negative 4 over 1. So that's down 4, right 1, and negative 1. So negative 1 is where I start. And then it's going to go down 4, right 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, and right 1. So that's my new point. So I'll start there and make sure I go through that point. And now the intersection is my answer. So I'm intersecting right here. I just want to select everything. And so that is the point negative 1, 3. So what does that mean for us? Well, that means it's going to make both of these equations true. So let me go through what that means. We are going to substitute the point negative 1, 3 into both of these. 
x is equal to negative 1, y is equal to 3, and let's substitute that into y equals 2x plus 5. So 3 equals 2 times negative 1 plus 5. So 3 equals negative 2 plus 5. So 3 is equal to 3. So it works in the first one. That's good. So x equals negative 1, y equals 3. Now we're checking it in the second one. y equals negative 4x minus 1. So 3 equals negative 4 times negative 1 minus 1. Negative 4 times negative 1 is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. It works. So it worked in both. So that's the big important thing is remembering that for this to work, it has to make both equations true. And when we're doing it by graphing, it means wherever they intersect is the solution. If you are given a graph, it's super easy. You're just going to look for the intersection and give the answer. The way I make it more difficult is I make you graph it. I would really like you today to explain what the graph looks like to an adult, a sibling, your favorite stuffed animal or your pet, just so that you can explain it to somebody. You just have to explain what it looks like. You don't have to explain it to them how to graph it and all that, but hey, the solution to a system when it's graphed is where the lines intersect, that part. That's what you need to explain to them. And you could draw them a quick little graph if you want to, but this part right here, I want you to explain that, per that part that I circled. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. And remember, be kind to one another because we can all use so much of your kindness in our lives. And I will see you in our next lesson. Bye for now.